Can you believe it's been nearly five years since the release of Bleach Brave Souls? They grow up so fast. But I think it's pretty fair to say that the game has evolved far beyond what any of us ever really expected out of it. Out of what was a simple mobile game, has breathed life into characters that I think we never thought we would ever see animated. The Royal Guard, more recently the Sternritter. I think it's pretty fair to say that Bleach Brave Souls and the way the community supported the game has really been a driving force in bringing back the Bleach anime. And now, as we hurtle towards the fifth anniversary in July, I wanted to do a video predicting what kind of units we'll see in that bumper two-week anniversary period. The anniversary event for Bleach Brave Souls is always a really exciting time, probably the most exciting period in the game's history. Last year we were treated to two brand new Ichigo units, a revamp of the full Hollow Ichigo, and a brand new Mugetsu unit, which to this day is still one of my favourite units in the game. And then for the second week, we were given Thousand Year Blood War Round 5, which saw the introduction of Bankai Yamamoto, Soifon, and Muken Aizen. So, knowing now what we do about the future of the Bleach franchise and its spin-offs, I wanted to do a video predicting the units we'll get over that two-week anniversary period. Before we begin, however, we are super close to a thousand subscribers, I can't thank you guys enough. If you're a Bleach fan who stumbled upon this channel for the first time and you think, you know what, I like the content on here and I want to stick around for more Bleach videos coming out every week, just hit that subscribe button and push us ever closer to four digits, like that's really exciting. And as always, don't forget to leave me a comment, let me know what units you think we're going to get for the anniversary period, and if you think my predictions are going to be correct. So, knowing what we do about the time scale surrounding Bleach and its spin-off series Burn the Witch, I think we can make a pretty safe assumption as to what the first set of anniversary characters will be. Burn the Witch, which came out as a one-shot in 2018, was confirmed to have a serialisation starting tentatively summer 2020. Although we don't know exactly when, it's got to be pretty soon. Considering we're already in June and there's currently no sign of the Burn the Witch manga, I think there's a decent chance of it potentially starting next month, which, surprise surprise, is the same month as Bleach Brave Souls Anniversary. If you ask me, they'd be crazy not to pair the two together as some kind of tie-in promotion. To that end, my prediction for the first week of Brave Souls' anniversary is that we will get Burn the Witch characters, and that tie-in will finally happen, and I know people are incredibly excited for that. But what characters will we get? Well, the two obvious ones are the main characters, Noel Nihashi and Nini Spangol. I've got to be honest with you, I'm really looking forward to seeing these characters in the game. It's just so crazy that this one shot from 2018 is now going to be properly integrated and accepted into the wider Bleach universe. That's really, really exciting. But will we get any more characters from Burn the Witch? Well, I think if we were going to get any third character, it would likely be... I think his name is Balgo? In the translation I originally read, it was Virgo, which to be honest makes a lot more sense, but the Bleach Wiki has him down as Balgo. I don't really know which it is, but I think it would be him. However, I think a moveset for this guy is nearly impossible to come up with. He is basically just a regular human. Towards the end, he becomes what they call a were-dragon, but he exhibits no abilities, nothing like that. Of course, the Burn the Witch series could come out before these characters arrive in the game, giving Caleb a bit of time to develop them some new movesets based on, I assume, us finding out more, more about their abilities and their power sets. As it stands, however, I don't think there's really any room for Balgo to have a moveset. And personally, I'd love to see Billy Banks Jr. as the third character in the game, purely because I think he has the coolest design out of any of these characters in the spin-off so far. Much like Balgo, however, we know nothing about this guy other than he looks cool. We don't know any, any of his abilities, we don't know what he's capable of. I'm assuming he can fight. He's part of the Sabres division, which sounds like a battle division to me. But again, we don't know what he can do. That leaves me with one option. And I think there's a great chance of them doing this because they did it last year. I think we will simply get two new anniversary characters, being Noel and Ninny. I think bringing those two characters over from Burn the Witch makes an absolute load of sense. But how would they play? I think that's a very interesting question. I think Caleb could really mix it up with these guys based on the, again, very little we know about them. If you look back at the one shot we've seen, we can see that Noel pulls off some pretty impressive hand-to-hand -hand combat. So despite these characters primarily using guns, I could definitely see her as a melee character. I really hope when they move around, they move around a little bit like Machine uh, Society Unohana, and they're sat on their dragons. I think that would be really, really cool. The only other abilities we have from these guys is the Coin Gate, which I could definitely see as some kind of essay. I don't know what it would do necessarily, because I think it's a travel move, it's not a fighting move. 
but they could definitely incorporate it somehow. And then you also get Noel's absolute dragon shutter attack, which I think is 100% going to be her special, her, her big special move, unless, like I said, there's anything else revealed in the actual serialization. And then Ninny, there's even less about this character to go off. But I think if we're going to make Noel a melee character, she could be a ranged character firing her gun. I could definitely see that. But in terms of her actual essays and her, her ultimate, it's so difficult to know what it is. Unless they do some kind of jokey ultimate where it's like featuring her massive ad billboard and then maybe it like blows up or something and she goes, she goes ballistic because we know she's got a temper on her. So I could see a comedic special, but I think it's more likely that K-Lab will see what's in the serialization and use something from there. Either way, I could absolutely see these two characters coming to the game in the anniversary. I think the tie-in makes perfect sense from a timings perspective and a hype perspective, because I think people would be incredibly excited about these guys coming. I also think they'd have to both be no affiliation, so that's quite interesting as well. Moving on though, the more tentative part, in my opinion, is week two. Now, like I said already, week two last year was Thousand Year Blood War round five. So it makes absolute sense for Thousand Year Blood War round 10 to be week two this time. And again, it makes perfect sense. If we just take a brief moment to try and try and predict June, I think the mid-month could be another premium banner leading up to the swimsuit banner for the end of the month. That would leave us wide open for Thousand Year Blood War to come back for the anniversary, as we've just had Can't Fear Your Own World. That makes a lot of sense to me. As for what Thousand Year Blood War characters it could be, if the floodgates are open, it's got to be the return of the Stern Ritter. I think three more of the Quincy bad guys would be just super, super hype. The first three were incredibly well received, and probably that was probably the most excited I've seen the community for a new banner in a really long time. I think the Sturmitters for Anniversary makes absolute sense, but who are they going to pick? Now, I've already proven with my predictions in the past that I have no idea how Caleb is going to handle these characters. I did not expect Candice, and I sure as hell did not expect Askin in the first banner. But I did expect Bambietta, so I was right on that mark. So for my Anniversary prediction, I'm going to go with another Sturmitter that I was almost certain they would use in the first banner. And that's Asnot. I think the community is definitely just as excited to see this guy join the game as they were for Askin and Bambietta. I think this is clearly another incredibly hyped Sturmitter character that people were desperate to see. And I think it makes a lot of sense to bring him in in a really exciting event like this. Now, if we look at how Caleb handled the first Sturmitter banner, personally, I think it's quite clear they did two hyped Sturmitters and one who... Yeah, no, people aren't that crazy about, and I'm generalising here, I know, but I don't think people were that mad about Candice, compared to Askin and Bambietta. So, if we take that example and bring it to the anniversary one, as not as a hype Sternritter, I could then see someone like Giselle Jewell coming in as another hype Sternritter, and then the third character could honestly be anyone. Now, because it's anniversary, they might do three hype characters, uh, but I could quite easily see them throwing in someone like Robert Akutrone. To be honest, I would be really hyped for a banner with Asnot, Giselle and Robert. I don't know about you guys, that would be that would be really exciting to me. But because it's anniversary, they could take a different approach with the Sturmitter altogether. And maybe it's time for a remake of the Big Daddy himself, Yuha Baha. Now, I think it's definitely going to happen at some point. I think Yuha is getting a remake, Ichibay is getting a remake, Yama's getting another character. Uh, but I just think... With the Sturmritter coming into the game in full force, the anniversary is an absolutely perfect time for the Emperor himself to make a big splash. There's absolutely no getting around the fact that his first, shall we say, experimental unit was a little bit disappointing for people. So now is a really great time for Caleb to rectify that and give us the Yuha that is as powerful as he should be. There's also the question of other hype Quincy's who I think probably deserve to be in the game maybe sooner than someone like Asnot. So I'm talking about characters like Hashwolf or Basby, characters who I think clearly were the most important Sturmitter alongside like Askin, who's already in the game. But I don't think they're going to throw all the big names at us too quickly. They want to space these guys out. There's loads of Sturmitter to go through, but I don't think I would be underestimating it to say at least half of them are fodder characters that people aren't that interested in. <laughs> That's just the unfortunate truth of it. Now, personally, I'm kind of expecting Hashwolf and Basby to arrive in the same banner, uh, but I don't think that's going to be anniversary, but I could be completely wrong. So for my prediction, I'd like to stick with As, Giselle, and a third character. I think As not, I really think like this is the time to bring him into the game, but I also think that 
a remake of Yuha would work really well here. And I just don't think they're going to bring in too many big names at once. So I wouldn't expect to see Hashwolf, Basby and Yuha in a single banner. Or, you know, Yuha, Hashwolf and Sturmata Uryu, for instance. Like, that's another character that should be in the game by now. Kind of surprised he's not already. Uh, but maybe he'll come in alongside Thousand Year Blood War Chad. Like, Orihime was completely random during the Royal Guards. So Chad and Uryu have got to be in here somewhere. To that end, I'm going to stick with those Sturmaters that I've chosen. Uh, but like I said, it really could be anyone. There is, of course, the option they don't pick the Sturmaters at all. Now, I'm nearly certain that Thousand Year Blood War is going to be the second week of anniversary, but they might go with something a bit more Ichigo-centric, as it is the Brave Souls birthday event. To that end, I think it could be very well time we finally get everything but the rain. Uh, I think this is a banner, again, that people have been crying out for, and I'm really surprised we haven't had it yet. I think people would absolutely love to have young Captain Ishin, young Masaki, and then I think the third unit in the banner would definitely be white, but there is an argument to be made for young Ryuken as well, even though he literally does nothing in, the, in that mini-arc, really. I'd love to see a four-person banner to really do the arc, the, that mini-arc justice, but I think if they cut anyone, it's young Ryuken. And there you have it, really. That's my prediction for Brave Souls' big anniversary event characters. Uh, I think Burn the Witch should be a lock from me. That's a that's a, I am I am so certain that that could happen based on the timings of everything. The manga coming out probably around the same time. A two-person banner with Nini and Noel really gets the hype going. And then for week two, we have Thousand Year Blood War round ten, and I really expect the second wave of Stern Ritters. Just a question of who, but I think Az has a great chance. I think a Yuha remake has a great chance. But let me know in the comments below, guys. Like I said, who do you think is going to make it? Who do you want to see make it? Who would, would you be happy with my prediction or would you absolutely like to see somebody else? And as I said before already, guys, make sure to hit that sub button and keep the channel going. I really appreciate the support. Keep pushing us towards a thousand. That would be amazing. But until next time, guys, I shall catch you later. I'll see you then.